Hello everybody, Julie here from Designs by Juju and I am finally bringing you our updated uh, cute dog softy uh, files. You'll see we have an alternate face with a smile here with alternate eyes. Everything that I've changed is going to be included um, with your original files. So I have new instructions, I have a new video tutorial here. I have made a lot of it a lot easier and a lot more understandable. Um, I'm gonna include the instructions. They're gonna have your cut, all your cutting sizes in inches and not centimeters. Um, but just so you know, any of our stuff that we had bought from Millie Melly that might have centimeters, um, all you have to do is go on Google and, and do centimeters to inches and type it in and it translates it. Because I understand it's inconvenient for you as an American, but we also have people all around the world that only use centimeters and they have to go on and type centimeters to inches so all the time. So um, as we move on, I will make sure to update those. But this has inches. Um, so I have named her Patience because it's taken me a long time to get her ready and uh, you've been very patient waiting. This is with the wider, easy, very easy to turn arms and legs. Um, I told you there's gonna be two eye options and two mouth options. Um, I will take you step by step through the tutorial. I have made the little bandana here. I, in the video, I talk about showing you how to do the snap, the cam snap, and then I just went and I'm having, this is something's wrong with my snap setter, so like it broke or something. So I couldn't do that, but I just, right now I have it pinned on. Um, and I just love her, she's so cute. Um, I think you're gonna find, this is just, these are a dream to turn compared to the long skinny ones. You still get the long skinny ones and actually, um, I'll explain in the video, when you use the stretch of your fabric, if your stretch for your legs, if your legs are going like this and the stretch, you want the stretch going horizontal, it makes it way easier. I used a micro fleece um, fabric, which I just thought made everything go smoother and um, I hope that you enjoy her. I have to edit all of these videos and it's gonna take me a little bit to get it up on YouTube but I'm gonna have it in portions up on the Facebook group. And um, in the next couple days, all of these files will be uploaded to the server. So here we are and um, thank you for your patience. Talk soon. Hello everybody, this is Julie from Designs by Juju and we are going to start with the ears. You can see in the video here on the screen, this is how it comes up on my screen. I brought in all five files and um, actually, I take that back, I didn't bring in the back, but I will. So the ears are right here, okay? So, um, Depending on your machine, you cannot, you might or might not be able to see the name of the file. I might change the names so that front and back are showing first. Um, the way you'll know with the legs and arms is the arms are just almost exactly the same. It's just slightly shorter. Okay, so let's go on to stitching our ears. I'm gonna bring it up onto my screen and set it and I'll get there in the next video. Okay, the first step that you're going to stitch is gonna show like a basting box and that's just gonna show you where to lay your fabric. Right now it is just stitching the basting box for, um, it'll show us where to place our fabric. So as you can see here, I just laid down my fabric um, for my ears face side up and then I'm going to take my next piece of fabric and I'm going to put it face side down. Okay, so both of my fabrics are covering that basting line that you saw. They are right sides together and now the machine is going to stitch them down and then stitch the ears closed. Well, not totally closed. It's going to stitch the ears shapes and then we'll leave an opening for you to um, be able to cut them and turn them right side out. Okay. 
Okay, so now that fabric is held in place and the next step will show you your ears and it's going to stitch the ears together um, with a reinforcing triple stitch so that when you turn them, they're gonna be nice and strong and we won't be able to poke holes. There's one ear, and you can see it's going backwards in like a triple stitch, and that's gonna be nice and reinforcing to keep the ears strong for your doggy. I'm gonna stop the video at this point because um, it's just redundant, and I'll show you once it's all stitched. Okay, the ears are just about done, and um, it's a three minute stitch out on and that's if you're going at 700 speed. So I actually always slow my machine down a little just because. So um, it's really quick. We're gonna unhoop and cut these out. So I have removed the hoop from the machine. And I, if I didn't mention previously, I'm using a six by 10 size. This is a dime um, magnetic hoop that I'm using for those who are curious. The um, fabric that I used here is just organic cotton knit, two pieces together. We're going to unhoop and then we are going to cut out the ears and leave this end open and then turn them right side out. The next thing that you'll want to do is just remove all your stabilizer before cutting the ears out. In case you haven't figured out, I'm videotaping this in myself and my son is in the middle of a physics class online. So um, it is not easy doing this myself. So I just cut it in half so that um, as I'm cutting them out, it's just easier to work with one ear at a time. Okay, so I have cut both my ears out and now I'm gonna turn them right side out. Okay, my ears are done. They're turned right side out. I'm gonna give them a press and uh, set them aside for later. Okay, so we are going to make the bandana and here's the design up on my screen. The first thing, so I have my uh, tear away stabilizer hooped and ready to go. The first thing that is going to stitch is um, a rectangle and that is going to be a placement line for my fabric. And here we go. I will be, this is just going to stitch a rectangle and I will be right back when it is done. Okay, so this rectangle here is the placement line over which I am going to place my fabric. So you want to place your fabrics right sides together and place them down over the rectangle covering the entire placement line and then the machine will stitch them down. Okay, so as you can see, I have both of the fabrics right sides together covering the placement line and now the machine is going to stitch down again that rectangle in order to hold these fabrics in place. Okay, and now um, the next step is it's going to stitch the outline for the actual bandana and um, it's going to do a reinforcing stitch. This is going to leave an opening. It's going to stitch the two pieces of fabric together, leaving an opening. And when it is done stitching, it's going to go back over with a reinforcing stitch. When it's done stitching, you're going to remove this from the hoop. Unhoop it, remove your stabilizer. And um, cut it out, leaving about a quarter, an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch all the way around. And you're going to turn it right side out and give it a press. Okay, I have removed the um, stabilizer and I'm just going to cut it out now. Okay, so here is my little bandana. I turned it right side out. You'll want to um, get all those seams poked out well. Here's my little opening. Um, I am going to be top stitching all the way around with my machine. I like a nice finished edge. 
you can do that or you can whip stitch this clothes by hand or you can like use something like stitch witchery which is like this um no sew little tape and you press it and it will be permanently closed then you will attach a snap for your uh, closure or some um, velcro whatever you choose Okay, so now we're going to do the front and the back legs. I'm only going to demonstrate them once because it is exactly the same process, except one is slightly longer, okay? So I have decided to make my dog with a micro fleece and it is a lighter weight fleece than the polar fleece. And I just think, um, I mean, it's soft, it's flexible and it will um, be easier to work with. Now. When you cut your pieces and you've got your legs, okay, Jake, can you see the uh, screen here and you got the, the legs are gonna go up and down, okay? When you cut your fleece, you wanna cut it so that the stretch part is going horizontal. So that when you cut, when your legs stitch, okay, it's gonna be the horizontal way that stretch. It's gonna make it so, so, so much easier for turning, I promise you. So. Over here, Jake, I have hooped my piece of terror stabilizer and I'm going to, you can see that it's a very quick uh, design and I'm going to get it started. And the first, as with the bandana and as with the ears, it's going to stitch a basting line to show you where to lay down your fabric. So let's do that. And on my fleece, there's kind of a right, sort of a right side and a wrong side. Sometimes I have trouble figuring that out, but one is more pilly than the other. So I'm gonna use that as the wrong side. So I am going to be putting that, my fleece down to cover this area right side up. Okay, so um, I've got my placement box and I'm just gonna lay down my um, fleece that's gonna cover that whole area in the box. Make sure that it's covering all the lines and it is. And now it's just gonna stitch this down. Okay, you can see on your screen, you'll see a box. I just wanna get that down because it's gonna stitch the little paws afterwards and um, you don't want it bunching up your fleece. Okay, so now it's going to stitch your paw print, so make sure you have the right color on um, your machine that you wanna use for the paw print. I've adjusted the way the paw prints stitch out so that it is more um, efficient. And I think that those of you who have made the dog before will be pleased with, um, it just doesn't jump around as much as the older one did. We get up and down so they can see better. There you go. Okay, so the uh, little paws are done. So now what we wanna do, it's going to stitch the um, outline, outline for the legs and it's gonna stitch them together. So I'm gonna put my right side down, okay? Kind of like right over the original piece. You wanna smooth it out. Right side down, remember, because we're going to um, be turning these. So right now they're right sides together. So what it's going to do is it's gonna stitch the outline for the legs. And let's see. It is doing it in a triple reinforcing stitch. So that when you turn them, their legs are gonna be closed and they're gonna be nice and strong.
Take a picture. This file, I believe, is the front legs. Trying to do this video and take the step-by-step -step photos along the way can be a little challenging because I might forget a step, but my wonderful son here has told me that you can take photos while you're videoing. <laughs> it's a wonderful invention. Once we're done with this step, we're going to remove it uh, from the hoop and remove the stabilizer. For every single step of the way, I'm using a tearaway stabilizer. And um, once we will cut it, like probably less than a quarter an inch all the way around, and then you're going to find it is so, so much easier to turn these legs um, because A, the uh, stretch of the fabric is horizontal, and B, I widen them. Gone are days of tears of uh, dealing with these legs. If you love the long skinny ones and had no trouble, that's great. You still have those options, but there are people who wanted the water option. Okay, so this is done. Okay, so um, I'm removing from my hoop and let's see here. Um, so Jake, you can take a picture there that I removed it from the hoop. Okay, and um, I'm going to take this picture too, honey. I'm going to remove my stabilizer now. It's kind of fun, right? Removing stabilizer, you get to just rip it. Um, okay, so I have finished removing my stabilizer and um, it's time to cut the legs out. So what I like to do is you can see that, um, take a picture there. You can see um, there's space in between each leg. So what I'm going to do is just kind of cut this in half so that I can just work with one leg at a time. And I like to cut them out um, like, like an eighth to a quarter of an inch all the way around. You just want to make sure that you don't cut into the stitching. Okay. And... I'll just do one of these for you so you can see what I'm doing. Jake, take a picture. Okay, so there's one leg. Okay, so these are the front legs. Um, I'm just going to turn now inside out and you can see, like, look at this, okay? If you did the other dog, like, it, the <laughs> this didn't happen. Um, Turns very easy. You can get it most of the way. You can poke it right through with your finger. Um, I have these um, hemostats and I just kind of go in. Now, when some people love to make this without stuffing the arms and the legs, and that's great, it's adorable. If you want to stuff them, I would recommend lightly stuffing them. There's one. Take a picture, Jake. Um, lightly stuffing them, not all the way to the top. You want to leave this, you know, this at least this like good, good half inch at the top loose and unstuffed because that is where the machine is going to be stitching them to the body. So these are just a, a, a pleasure to turn. Okay. Like, like I actually cried <laughs> making these before with the skinny and the heavier fleece and all that. And I just was like, my poor customers, if they have arthritis or any of that, like, I mean, I was a nurse for almost 20 years. And so I really, I just was like, oh my gosh, like there are some people that just can't do this with all the tools in the world. So um, we had to go and do this for you, so. Um, okay, so we've got a set of legs done. Jake, I'm going to have you take a picture that makes sure it's a, a well, you have a good light and everything? Yep. Okay, so we're going to lightly stuff, if you so choose, set aside. Same exact procedure that I just went through for the bottom legs. Now, on the dog, usually the bottom legs have the paws facing front. That was designed that way on purpose, um, and I think it's really cute. 
and that's the way I'm going to display it on my website. Some people are really literal and just don't like the pause that way and they think it looks weird. If you think it looks weird, that's fine. All you have to do is that when we get to the point of putting it together and I'll show you that and I'll go back over that when I do the tutorial. But honestly, like I see so many comments on the group and people aren't happy about the paw prints facing this way, like to each his own, right? Like if you like the paw prints this way, great. If you don't, just turn them. It doesn't matter. It, it, it's because it's all symmetrical. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go on to the next part of the dog. Okay, so um, I am going to lightly stuff the, the legs and the arms. So um, just put little bits at a time. There's, um, if you have that stuffing, you might have like a chopstick or um, some type, there's all sorts of tools you can use. I'm gonna kind of shove it in there with the hemostats a little bit. Um, the tip of a marker, whatever you have, just to get that stuffing down further. So, I mean, I probably don't have to put this in the video, but I want to. So just so you can see, you know, how people just use whatever you have on hand to get that stuffing in there. I just do it in smaller balls. Um, and um, how, depending on how floppy you want the dog, like lighter stuffing is gonna probably give you more flop. Um, if you like it, I think I'm gonna put one more little ball in there. And what I've done, and Jake, I'll ask you to, um, um, you, can you get a little closer? You can see the stuffed, um, take a picture, honey. Actually, take a picture of me putting some stuffing in this for the tutorial, people, sorry, um, for this tutorial, okay. Take that picture, okay. So it's a nicely stuffed, but if you can see, get close, honey, it's not at the top part that's all going to be stitched down, okay? So you want to stuff it up to like about like there. Because you're going to want, you don't want this so puffy that you're not going to be able to stitch the whole doggy together. So this here is going to stay unstuffed, okay? Okay, it is time for us to do the main part of the dog. I have hooped a piece of tearaway stabilizer and we are going to get going. The, the first step is going to stitch a um, rectangular basting line, just like in the other files, to show you where to place the front fabric for the doggy face. Okay, you can see that that is finished, and we are gonna lay down our fleece to cover that um, placement line. Okay, I've laid down my fleece, which is the front of the dog, and it's face side up, and I'm going to put my hoop back on the machine, and it is going to stitch that same rectangle down to hold the fleece so that we can do the rest of um, the doggy. So we are just stitching everything down right now. Okay, the next step is just going to stitch a basic outline for the body of the dog. And here we go. We're just stitching a basic outline for the body of the dog. This will help you later as you're placing the arms and the legs and the ears, just to make sure that when you tape things down to put the back on that you have everything um, inside that line. The next step is going to stitch a placement line for the eye patch. And you're going to just do that as an applique. And I will show you um, how to cut around that. This is just so you know where to lay the fabric for the eye patch. Okay, so um, over that placement line, you have this little piece of, um, this is my applique fabric for the eye patch. So you just wanna get in there and just lay that down to totally cover that area. If you have a certain part of your fabric that you want to show, you'll wanna 
kind of fussy cut that or fussy place it but um, this is I'm not really being too specific so I've laid down my applique fabric and now I'm going to let that stitch down keep going I'm just keeping that smooth um, Okay, and it's just going doing a back stitch there like I do all of my appliques to really secure that applique fabric down. Okay, so I'm only going to be cutting off from here and just on this inside line and up and you're going to be leaving all of this because that's going to be extra. So I've got my I've got these, uh, I use a six inch double edge blade curve uh, from Ginger. I love them. Um, and I'm just going to get as close as I can, just as if you're doing applique, because this is an applique, um, the eye patch. So once we trim this excess, we're gonna go straight up and we're just gonna leave all that excess there. And we're gonna go back to the machine. Okay, so now that's going to um, just do the satin stitch of the applique for the eye. And make sure you have, of course, the um, right color thread that you choose. This is going to stitch that down. The stitch is done here. Okay, so the satin stitch for the eye patch is finished. And the next step is going to be for the nose and the mouth of the dog. Okay, so I just put a piece of um, Solvi water soluble stabilizer on top here while I do the eyes and the nose and the mouth to keep the stitches um, nice and flush with the fleece fabric. So right now we are doing the nose and the mouth. And you make sure that they have the thread that you want to use. I'm using black. If you were using a different color, make sure that you've changed it. And we will come back when the nose and the mouth is done stitching. Okay, so now that your um, nose and mouth has stitched, um, you're going to do your eyes next. And if you chose the eyes that we're going to do that has white and black, you're going to change your thread to white and then go back to black. And if you're just doing the black eyes, then the machine will automatically start stitching those black eyes. So um, we have to change the thread. And um, so that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to change it to white and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's going to start um, and do the whites of both eyes and then we'll change it back to black and um, come back and do the pupils of the eyes and the outlines. And once the whole little face is done, I will come back and we will get on to the placement lines for where you're gonna put down the appendages. Okay, so now it's gonna stitch the black part of the eyes. And it's gonna do the eyeballs and an outline on both sides and I will be back when that is done. Okay, so you can see our face is embroidered. And the next step we're gonna go and it's gonna do um, placement lines for like your arms and your legs. And I'm gonna take you step by step through what I think is the best way to place everything. Um, I am going to remove now the water soluble stabilizer and I will be right back. I very, that water soluble stabilizer tears off very, very easily. So just do it very carefully because you don't want anything to shift or, anything but now we're going to put it back on the machine sorry about my finger huh and that's all right and i'm going to change my thread because i don't think i want black thread for the placement lines i'm going to do that pink or salmon color and um i will be right back okay so in this uh step it's going to just do these little lines for the ears the arms and the legs and those are your placement lines for where we're going to be attaching um, the ears that we made, the arms, as well as the legs. So it's literally going to just kind of do these uh, lines all around to be guidelines. You can choose what other color. I'm just kind of choosing the same color that I'm going to stitch it all together in. Um, so here we go. Just 
So as you can see, it's doing the same thing for each um, appendage. This is for the arms. And we'll be back when it's done. Okay, so now we have the placement lines by the arms, then the legs down there. And um, now we are going to start attaching the ears first and then go, we're going to go one at a time, one ear at a time, one arm at a time. So I'm going to start up on the left to the right, come down to this arm, um, this leg, this leg, etc. And I want you to see how the needle will go and um, really um, secure everything. So we're going to start up here on the left with this ear and the ears are going to kind of come down and stick out. So I like for approximately, you want to center it in that placement line about right under the needle, okay? Because the needle is going to start in the center. It's going to come out like to one side, go back over and meet back in the middle. So the ear, that loose part is extending at least a half an inch beyond the edge of the dog, okay? So I'm going to start, I'm going to hold this, keeping my fingers away from the needle, but I want to hold this ear. And again, it's facing out because when we turn it, it's going to be flipping. So let's um, do this part here. See, it's starting in the middle because we don't want to catch the ear on either side. So there we go. And there it is. It, it stitched it down. And we're going to do the same thing with the next ear. It's going to come over here. And did that cut my thread? Hmm. Let's see. Okay, so again, the ear is extending about a half inch beyond the edge of the dog. It's centered between the placement line and it's the center here should be underneath the needle. And I did this, I made it so that the machine would stop in between, um, cut like in different colors so that you can place. I don't want it just to be like a runaway train. I want you to actually place your ears and place your arms. So it's gonna start right there in the center of the ear. It's going to go to one side, stitch it down, and back across the other. There you go. And it really stitches it down good. So now, just to get them out of the way, just flip them up like this to just keep them out of the way. Okay. We're going to work on the arm. The next, let's see if I can get that in. We're going to work on the first arm. And let me grab these. So I'm going to place the arm down and um, with the little paw prints down and you want to get this um, flat part, okay, like the seams are on the side and you see the placement line here. You want to get it about a half an inch beyond and you want to get the needle about right in the center, okay? And we are going to, I'm going to hold this kind of carefully and we're going to stitch this down. Just do the best you can to have it centered. But it starts again in the center so that it doesn't catch anything. Okay? Okay, so I've placed my leg and the paw print for me is down because I want my paws facing out. And it's right underneath the needle. The leg is facing up. Okay? And I am going to start and I'm going to stitch the uh, leg down. It's going to go over to one side, back over to the other side. And it got them both down. And now it's going to go over to the other leg. Okay. And are you still going with the video? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to put the other leg underneath the center of the needle extending about out a good half an inch over that placement line okay and again it's going can you take a picture jake got it yes okay now we're going to stitch this leg down and what it's doing is it's again going from side to side and i did that because i did not want What's happening to me is sometimes things get caught, and by doing that, um, nothing was getting caught up. All right, so I'm going to kind of grab these legs and flip them down. Okay, we got one, one arm over here. We got our ears done, 
And the last thing is going to get this um, other arm done. Take a picture there, Jake. Okay. So I'm going to put my paw print down. I'm going to get the flat part here underneath of the needle, centered on that placement line, a good half an inch out. And let's stitch it down. Okay. Stop. So I feel like um, the changes I made makes it easier to attach all of these pieces rather than hoping that everything gets stitched in the right place and everything. So we're going to flip the legs and keep them down. Okay. This is another reason why um, it was important that the, uh, let's see. It was important that the uh, legs were lightly stuffed. We want to take your, at this point now, we wanna use some tape, some um, like painter's tape, and we want to try to secure the arms down like this in between the legs, because what we're gonna be doing is sandwiching fabric around to stitch the back to the front. Um, we're also going to be folding in the ears like this and make sure they stay well out of the way and securing that down with some tape. So I'll be right back and show you what I mean. Okay, so this poor guy, um, I have really taped him down well. When I say tape him well, I mean tape him well. I taped his legs down really hard to the hoop. Um, I've got those arms secured between his legs because what we want is, um, we want this clearance here for everything to stitch, okay, to stitch the back to the front. So we just want to make sure nothing's going to get stuck in that. I think I might even take some more tape here to kind of really flatten that out. Um, and I will be right back. Okay, so uh, we're going to put the back on to the front of the doggy. And um, as I mentioned before, your stretch for your piece should be going horizontal. You want to put your right side down and just make sure that it kind of covers the entire thing and have it be as smooth as possible, okay? And then carefully, carefully replace and slide your hoop back on to your machine. Okay. Now, smooth anything out. You want to smooth out your fleece the best that you can. Um, really the best that you can. Make sure that it's covering your whole doggy. You don't want anything getting caught up. This, this requires babysitting. I'm going to slow down my hoop. I mean my hoop, I'm sorry, my speed to as slow as it goes, 350. This isn't a time where you're like in a hurry to get a project done, okay? You want it to all stitch around and see how I really am fussing with it. All right, well, here, here we go, everybody. It's gonna go around once and then it's gonna come back. Also, I am, um, do not hesitate to stop it if something is getting bunched. So have your finger right there by the stop. And I'm keeping my hand away from the needle, don't worry. Um, but as you can see, Jake, show them down here. We're good, it's all gonna be stuffed. Life's gonna be just fantastic. And once it's stuck like down this first round, you're good, okay? Also, you will notice at the end, it's gonna stop down in the left corner and there's a reason for that and I'm gonna explain that to you. All right, now we're going back the other way. Jay, can you take a picture kind of the whole thing? 
So when it stops here, what I did, and I will put this in the instructions, is I'm doing a reinforcing stitch so that everything's going to be good for stuffing. There's going to be on your design, it's going to look like a line down here that's supposed to stitch. Do not stitch that. The only reason that's going to be there is so that your machine won't try to go and return to center and like destroy the dog. Um, <laughs> right? Because you get all this bulk here and that could really cause a real problem for you and you certainly don't want that to happen. So I added that stitch there. You're not going to stitch it. Um, once this is done, and I know it's very slow, but um, I'm glad it is because you just put all this work into it and all of this love and get his little feet down here sticking out. Um, you certainly don't want um, anything bad to happen. If you've got wrinkles here, oh well, like it's all going to be stuffed with cotton, so it's in his lovey for whoever's getting it. So um, it's going slow and that's okay and I'll be back as soon as it is finished or when it's close to finishing. I'm not going to lie, I, uh, <laughs> this update and video and new instructions has been a long time coming and um, so I think I'm going to name this dog Patience because I didn't have the patience and you guys have been so patient and uh, so her name will be Patience and I'll give her to uh, my granddaughter Lucy. This bottom part that's going to remain open is um, specifically um, to turn. So we're going to do that in a second. Okay, and this part is stopping. So notice how it stopped and it just moved over to the left a little bit and that's so that we can slide it off of the machine without catching the needle on anything because otherwise it would have returned to the center. Okay, so we can remove the doggy from the hoop. Yay! I got lots of uh, tape here, so let's get that all off. And, oh, what a relief. <laughs> okay, so some of this tape here I can just easily remove at the bottom. And what I'm going to do first is, um, and some of it I'll have to remove once I turn it. But right now I'm just going to remove the stabilizer on the back. It's this tearaway stabilizer. And once I am done doing this, because I want to make sure to be careful. Um, let's see. Let's get the outsides off. Once I'm done, I will be right back to um, turn it with you. Okay? So I'm just finishing up um, removing the stabilizer. And what we're going to, excuse me, do now is we're going to carefully, starting about just to the side of the leg, we're going to trim and cut all the way around, just cut out the dog, okay? So I'm going to sit down and um, Jake, can you nice and smooth? And you just want to go about a quarter an inch around on the outside of the top of the dog's head and start that way and work your way around carefully, slowly, there's no rush. Okay, making sure that you don't cut the dog. Um, okay, make sure you get both uh, layers and that you're cutting, yeah, cutting both layers simultaneously. Don't cut off the legs. We don't want an amputated doggy. Um, so I'm making a mess here. Okay, so that's one side. And um, kind of, Jake, put the phone away. Your phone, please. Haha, -ha. motherhood never stops people, right? Okay. Um, I'm trying to text back there. But... All right, so um, um, just carefully trimming off the head, around the head here. Um, I'm going to clip carefully any curves, right, like inner curves, like you would when you're, um, okay, are you getting what I'm doing, honey? Yes. Okay. To the best of my ability. Okay. You're doing great. So we're just going to cut this all out and I'm just going to do it to the feet and I'll be back when I've gotten down to there. All right, so I cut around most of the dog and I've kind of left this piece hanging in the back. 
And now we're just going to turn the doggy right side out. And we got the tape and everything in there still, and that's fine. Um, okay. So we want to carefully remove the tape. And this doggy's coming to life here. I'm so excited. So excited. Patience is getting a soul. Um, let's get all that painter's tape off so that we can see her come to life. And then we're going to cut up the bottom flap so that we can stuff her and then sew up her bottom. And then I'm going to be showing you how I top stitch. So you see the floppy ears here? She kind of has that Clifford look, right? Which I love. Little fun fact about Juju. So I loved the book, Clifford the Big Red Dog. Oh my gosh, and the cartoon and everything when I was a little girl. And I always loved, hi, my name is Emily Elizabeth. So I, my first daughter's name is Elizabeth. And when I found out I was having a girl, I decided I was going to name her Emily. So I'd have an Emily and Elizabeth. Um, so um, what am I going to use? I'm just going to kind of go in here and... Um, poke around like to open up the I could have find my so if your ears had like one side of fleece they might be more stiff so they would like stand up mine are more floppy we'll see what they look like once I stuff the doggy but I have this turning tool which is great once you've turned something you st it's got like this little blunt end here and it's a prick called the precision turning tool made by um, RNK um, so I just kind of go in and I poke like I really get those seams nice and um you know so that there's no tucks are remaining so i really get that seam where it's stitched push push that out nice and full so that when we stuff it it's going to stuff um fully and completely and let me get the other side jacob just says is that really how you got the inspiration for emily and lizzie's names i'm like well not Lizzie, because Lizzie was, my grandmother's name was Elizabeth, and my middle name is Elizabeth, but yeah, when I named my daughter Emily, that is exactly the uh, inspiration. So, so I've just um, turned it and kind of poked out, and here we have, we're getting there, we still have this uh, part on the bottom, so we have a, like a butt flap here, right, in the front, and then, um, we're going to kind of cut enough in the back so that once we, um, we're going to cut it maybe down, um, let me see how much I want to cut it. I'm going to cut a, a considerable amount because we're going to stuff it all in and then we're going to like whip stitch it shut. Um, so from the back, Jake, can you get like a good picture of this? Okay. This is the front. This is the back. Okay. And um, you have the video now? Okay. I'm going to just cut off a considerable amount and kind of round it from the back piece because obviously that's too much excess. And here we go. So now we have a doggy to um, stuff. And then I will show you how to pin the bottom and uh, sew it. Okay, so now it is time to stuff our doggy. So we're just gonna start, because um, we wanna get it up well into the head. Um, so I'm just gonna grab the stuffing and start like shoving it in there. And you can do it as full or not as you'd like. Um, just gonna keep stuffing it. Remember the arms and legs are already done. I did not stuff the ears. I, I suppose you could if you desired to, but... Um, I didn't and so what I'm going to do is I got a bunch of that in there is I'm going to kind of shove it up into the head um, just to get those cheeks full. Lucy has, oh, my little granddaughter Lucy has the, the little chubbiest little cheeks and um, they're just, oh my gosh, they're so cute. I sure wish I could see them more during this quarantine but uh, I will in time. So get those cheeks really out. So I got the head nice and stuffed. How cute is that? Um, 
I have a little something to share with you guys, and that is that pretty much the same exact animal is coming soon as a cat. Okay, I'm making the cute cat softy. I've already got the file, the prototype, and as soon as I'm able to, um, I'll get to it. But, you know, I've got a lot to do, so um, I'm not making any promises on that. Because So here we are. We've stuffed this quite a bit. I think I might um, get him a little more stuffed down here. And um, then I will get a needle and thread, which I'm not good at, but I can do it by hand. That's why I like never finish anything because I can't stand hand sewing. Um, but it must be done. It must be done. And I'm doing this because I have committed this to you guys and it has to get done. Okay. So here is patience. Patience is uh, patiently done. And now we're going to take some pins on this bottom part, guys. Okay, so um, to do the bottom, you wanna like tuck in all of these ends, okay? And then we wanna make sure that they're tucked in and um, pin it. So I'm gonna just take these pins and um, secure it so that all of the loose, like the raw edges are not showing. And kind of like st stuffing a turkey's butt, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not good at this, but um, that's, I guess, the only way, like you really wanna secure up a turkey's bottom so the stuffing doesn't fall out. And that's, a, a, this is, as technical as Juju gets, guys, so. You're trying, that's what counts. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm not perfect. Hashtag perfectly imperfect, that's what I always say. Uh, okay. So what I wanna do, the point is, is to secure it long enough to get it. Um, now in the front, you can see that it will look fine, right? With the legs, so you just wanna make sure that you get that back butt, butt flop. Butt fl <laughs> butt flap uh, done and um, okay so let's go um, I will be back take a picture of this Jake pinned no. okay take a picture of the front okay um, take a quick video I've been recording oh well hi I'm here <laughs> so now Okay, so you're just going to be um, it's just a whip, stri whip stitch or how or ladder stitch, however you um, prefer to do this. There really isn't a certain right or wrong way, and I'm not con I'm not certain that I am the authority. Okay, on hand sewing, so um, if you're not sure how to do a whip stitch or a ladder stitch, go on YouTube, and I'm sure that there are um, this needle stinks. Um, this needle is really awful. I might have to change it because it's driving me nuts. Um, so I'm just sewing up the bottom, basically, okay? I mean, there's no basically, that's just exactly what I'm doing. So um, I think I need to get a different needle. Keep pulling that through. However you have to do to best secure the bottom of your doggy. Okay, I will come back when it's done. So I'm just about um, finished up with um, sewing our little dog's butt. And then I am going to show you how um, I do the top stitching for the bandana because um, you don't have to. You can whip stitch that opening closed for the bandana if you choose. I just am, I really like to have a nice finished look. So. And um, since I clearly hate hand sewing, um, I think I will do the top stitching on, I'm going through several seams here to really get that uh, good. Okay, I am done, people. Yay, okay, let's get this knotted off. Um, so with the bandana, you can um, 
after you top stitch it, you can either use it like a cam snap or Velcro, um, whatever you choose. I use cam snaps and um, I like them. So, so I'm just gonna do one more here, knot it and call it a day for the butt. Let's see. The epitome of patience, yay, okay. So we are done with the main part of the dog. And um, you can stuff the legs more if you want. You can distribute the stuffing better if you want. Um, I'm happy with the way he is, okay? And I'll prop him up later. But here she is. Here we go, yay. Remember what I said? Um, with When I put the, when I sewed the legs on, I put the paw facing down so that the paws, when it's done, is facing forward. If you uh, want your paws going that way for the back legs, then when you're stitching your legs down, you would have the paws facing up, okay? I forgot to mention that. Um, so here's the dog. And now um, let me just fix up my machine to go to the sewing mode, and I'll show you how I top stitch the bandana. I'll be okay, so here's the bandana and I had turned it right side out and gave it a good press and here's my opening. And I'm just gonna top stitch all that closed. So Jake, if you could get um, close to the machine, just really zoom in there. So I'm gonna put my needle really close to that edge and just get a really slow um, stitching there. See, I'm like less than an eighth of an inch away from the edge and that's, you're just gonna go slowly all the way around, it really makes it look nicer, I think. It just takes a second, really. Um, go slow, take your time. All right, I'm gonna slowly turn, I'm really not good with this part, but that's okay. Um, my needle, thankfully, goes up as I stop make that turn I feel like I'm making yet another face mask right with all the top stitching I think I don't know how many you guys have made but I've made hundreds so so by doing the top stitching you're closing up that hole and giving it a nice finish all at the same time. Okay, eek. Get back on there. I'm gonna kind of do some back stitching. I, I went off by oopsies, perfectly imperfect. I'm not a seamstress, I think I've mentioned that before. There we go. There we go. I'm gonna cut it. And there you have your bandana. And then what you wanna do is make like, put a little snap on it, which we are gonna do in just a minute. And uh, isn't that cute? It's so cute. Okay.